Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, the solar system. And since I can't actually grab planets and play with them or travel to planets, I'm going to have to do that through my stencil in my art journal. So you're going to see me build this. I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks for how I use stencils and how I get crisp, clean lines. Well, I've got my stencil solar system here on the paper, and I'm using a cosmetic sponge with the paints. These are some of the Dilutions paints. Part of the reason why I'm using a cosmetic sponge is that helps me control how much paint I'm using. So if I want to get a really crisp, clean line on my stenciling, the trick is use a small amount of paint and something like a cosmetic sponge helps me use that small amount of paint. You'll notice I'm really pouncing it off. I'm also using an up and down motion. The more I go up and down, the cleaner my lines are going to be. If I go side to side, then there's a greater chance that some of it is going to seep under the stencil, which, by the way, I love that look too. So it's a matter of just being able to get the look that I'm going for for the project that I'm doing. And for this one, I want crisper lines. On the left side of the page, I put a little bit of repositionable tape, and that holds the stencil in place. I do that sometimes and sometimes I don't. It just depends on my mood in the day. Well, now I'm going to put a second color on here. And I don't want to do it in the exact same place, so I'm going to slide that stencil around until I get the openings positioned so that they do not have another circle in them. So what I'm trying to do is just create a whole lot of pattern here without having things overlap. Well, where did I get the idea for this stencil and why is it called Solar System? It's called Solar System because it's kind of my sort of abstracty, modern interpretation of planets and definitely not just the nine in our solar system, but planets that you know exist anywhere in the imagination or in real life. I am a sci-fi nerd at heart. Yes, I love going to Star Trek conventions and wizard cons and all those kinds of things. And now I'm about to create a problem for myself. These are the kind of problems I like to have, but it's still a problem. As I finish up the green, when I lift it up, I am one of those places where it's kind of a fork in the road, where do I keep it the way it is, or do I add another layer to it? Because I really, really, really loved how this looked with two colors on it. And so I had to, once I looked at it, and I thought about it, and then I realized, this is a stencil and paper. If I want to go back and do this again, I can. Let's take that risk and try that third color. So I'm going to bring in a darker color. But to get my patterns to not look like I've just got it in the exact same spot, just kind of moved over a little bit, I had to put this on half the page. Now, of course, I want some of that blue on the upper part of the page too. So stay tuned because I'm going to show you my easy trick for how to continue on the pattern without having to work very hard at it at all. And you know, there won't be any rulers or measuring or that kind of thing because frankly, I avoid those as much as I can in my life. So as I'm adding this dark blue on here, I'm either going to fall in love with the look of the dark blue or I'm going to go, oh, I went too far. And you probably know exactly what I'm going to call that. It's going to be an oops, an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly. But I don't know if that's happened yet and I won't know until I lift up the stencil. And we're getting close. There's just one line of little planets and orbits and that kind of thing to go. And then we'll see if I pushed this too far or not. I know I'm kind of curious to see because it's offset. I'm wondering if I'm going to like how it looks with the left part not having blue on it. So moment of truth here. I'm going to quit fiddling with this and making sure I've got blue everywhere and lift up the stencil and see if I like how it looks. And I do like it. So I'm going to use what I already have, which is the blue line stenciled, and I'm going to put the stencil on top of it. That way I can get an idea of basically so I make sure it's straight. And then I'm going to kind of lift it up and adjust it so that I get the spacing for where the next circles are going to go so it looks like it's just a natural continuation of the pattern. You can find this stencil and all my stencils over at Stencil Girl Products. And of course, if you'd like to see more of what I'm doing, I'd love it if you popped over to my website at acolorfuljourney.com. I've got a newsletter that has some downloadable goodies for you when you join, and every one of my newsletters always comes with some kind of downloadable treat, exclusive video, or something else waiting for you in there. As I finish up the blue here, I just want to say a great big thank you to you for joining me for today's play. It's always fun to create when you have friends with you. Okay, so moment of truth, here's what it looks like with all the blue on it. Well, my original plan had been to make an art journal background here, but I'm loving this so much, I'm not ready to cover this up with anything, so I'm just going to let it stay the way it is, and whenever I'm ready to turn it into a completed art journal page, I'm going to trust the muse to tell me when that time is. And you bet I will be sharing that. 
Thanks for being a part of this colorful journey.